Hello, in this video I want to show you what is Jupyter Notebook, how you can install it and how you can get started. Let me start with showing you how a Jupyter Notebook looks like. Here you see one of my notebooks and I have just opened it in a regular web browser. In this case it was Google Chrome. So let us have a look what this notebook contains. As you see in this notebook here, I start with a description of the problem that I want to solve later in Python. As you can see, I can use formatted text. For example, I have ad added here headings. I even have added mathematical formulas here. I have even added a picture. Then you see there is some bold font. You can also have italic font. You can even add bullet points, uh, numbered lists, web page links, and much more. And then you see here my Python code, uh, which is written here, and it's directly executed in this notebook. So let me just uh, start this, for example. I will press here on this kernel. I will restart and clear the output. And you see that these numbers here disappear. And now I could run all that code in the web browser, right? So you don't see any output here yet on these lines. But later, when I have a comment or if I have a code uh, that, that forces some output, output on the terminal, then you see the output is directly in line written into the Jupyter Notebook. So particularly when you start learning Python and if you want to make a nice structured documentation of your work such that you will be able to understand your code weeks later after you have written it, then Jupyter Notebook comes in very handy. Or if you have a research project and you want to document both the theory, your hypothesis and the code, as well as your results, Jupyter Notebook gives you the possibility to create a nicely structured and readable document. Jupyter Notebook is also easily transferred into a web page or a PDF document. So let me just click here one of the options. I will save this Jupyter document or notebook as a HTML file. And it's being downloaded. Let me click on this. And here you see you've just created a normal web page that you can upload on your website and you can share your ideas uh, with others even if they don't use Jupyter Notebook. Then let's get started and let's get installed Jupyter Notebook. For this reason, I will open the command prompt or terminal on my computer. In this video, I presume that you only have Python installed on your computer, but there are other ways to install Jupyter Notebook. For example, by means of the Anaconda distribution of Python, but this will not be covered in this video. So the only requirement is that you have Python installed and let us check this by typing python hyphen hyphen there is a space before the two hyphens and then version and then you should see uh, the version of python that is installed on your computer what we will now do is we will install Jupyter notebook this is simply done by writing pip space install Jupyter Notebook and let's press enter. Now Jupyter Notebook will be installed on your computer. You should now be able to run Jupyter in one of the following ways. Alternative one would be to write Jupyter Notebook in your console and then Jupyter should start up. Let me close this window 
And let me go back to the console and let me also um, close this Jupyter application by pressing Ctrl and C. Let me just clear the terminal or clear the screen by writing CLS. And then let's go to alternative two. You could write Jupyter hyphen notebook and enter. And again, Jupyter is started up. So let me close this one more time. Let me go back to the console. Let me interrupt this Jupyter application and let me clear the terminal. And then another one would be to write Python or pi short hyphen m and notebook. And again, you should be able to start up Jupyter. However, I have experienced the following problem. When I wanted to start up Jupyter Notebook as follows, so I wrote Jupyter space and then Notebook, then there was the following error message coming up. Jupyter is not recognized as an internal or external comment. So how to deal with this problem, I will show you in a separate video. But for now, let us just assume that Jupyter Notebook is working absolutely fine. So let's get started and create our first Jupyter Notebook. I will start with creating a folder that I will use as a working directory. So let me just create a folder here right on the desktop. I will call this folder new project. So this will be the folder where I will save my Jupyter Notebook files. And in case that Jupyter Notebook or your code uh, needs to access some other files, these files can also be stored in this uh, directory. So let me open this directory. Here it's coming. And let us copy the address of this directory. And then we go back to the comment prompt and I will change into that directory. We can write for this purpose on the Windows terminal cd like change directory and then I paste the address of this directory. Then let's press enter and now let's open Jupyter Notebook. And then Jupyter Notebook should start up by being in this directory that you have specified. So let me make a new file. So we start creating a new file. And it's going to be a Python file. So we, we press Python 3 here or we select Python 3 here. Okay. So... And then a Jupyter Notebook is opened up. So I will begin with writing a heading. So right now this first uh, box that you see here is basically a box where you can write some code. If you like to write some text, you would have to change that to Markdown. And now we can write regular text, headings, formatted text, numbered lists, bullet lists, and so on. So I will start with a heading. And a heading, a first level heading, starts with, with the hash mark. So this is a little matlib game. Okay? So if you press Shift and Enter, you see... Uh, this code, or basically, yeah, this code which basically creates the text, this is a markdown code, uh, creates this heading, and then it jumps automatically into the next line, or it creates uh, the next, uh, what do we call this, uh, cell, okay, it creates the next cell, which is automatically set to a code cell. However, I want to continue with changing uh, the description or this 
a text cell above. So let me double click on this one again. And then let me add here some text, some description what this Jupyter Notebook is about. So this Jupyter Notebook contains a little Matlib game. So I don't want to write uh, more than this, but let us add a little bit of formatting here. For example, if you want to have this Madlib in bold font, you would simply add two stars in the beginning and in the end of this word. Let us press Shift, uh, shift and Enter, and then we see here our text. And as you has, have seen before, you could add here different uh, styles. You can add pictures, you can add web links, and so on. So for right now, this is just sufficient for us, and now we will write some Python code. The first we want to ask the user is to give us some input. So let us here define three input uh, comments. So we are asking for a verb. So I'm defining here a variable, and this variable will contain some text, which will be provided by the user right of this uh, file. So give me a verb. So I write the text, which is supposed to pop up on the screen or on the terminal in quotation marks, and we can actually run that code by pressing shift and enter, right? And then you see here there's a little text box or a little input box coming up where you can write a verb like jump. Okay, I will go back to this code and I will define also an adjective. Um, that would be input again and give me an adjective. Okay, and then finally we add another one. Okay, just a number. And give me a number between one and 200. Okay, so that uh, looks good. Then we can execute this code. So you see the, the code is still in execution mode here by looking at this star. So it still ex ex uh, expects here something like, let me add here find. Then the code is executed from before. And then let me execute this one more time press shift and enter, and there is a verb, let me say go, enter, adjective, let me say blue, enter, and there should actually also come uh, up the, the next or the last input, and, and as you see, I forgot to write here input, so let me also add here input, and then you can run that once, once more, and then we should be good with this code. Okay, some small changes here so that it looks a little bit better. Now we want to find a nice sentence. Let's for example use the following uh, sentences like I am and then here we add the age. So let me just put here some x's. Years old uh, today was a dot 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 or x x x x x day. I had to dot 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 a lot, something like this. Okay, so we want to print that sentence where instead of the x's or the dots, uh, these uh, input. Um, is added 
or insert it that was given by the user. So we're gonna print that on the screen. So print, and then in quotation marks, I start I am, and then I, I'm adding again some quotation marks to stop that string and then comma. I will here add the variable, namely the number, and then a comma, and then we continue the string by the quotation marks. And I will continue this until there should be some adge adjective coming. So quotation marks, comma, then there is the adjective, comma. And then again, the quotation marks. So there should probably be some space, otherwise the adjective is <laughs> close to this uh, day. And then let's see another couple of quotation marks, or not a couple, actually just quotation marks, and then a comma, and then we would have to have the verb, okay. And then a comma and quotation marks, a little space, and after the dot or the period, we add our last quotation marks, and then we close the brackets. So let us see how this works by pressing shift and enter. And I am 100 years old, today was a great day. I, and there is a, is a word missing, I had to find a lot. So it seems that, um, you, as you see here, there is a lot of space between I had to find. So obviously here, Python is adding the space automatically. Let me press shift and enter. And so you don't need that spaces actually. So I'm gonna take those spaces here away. So let's see if this makes sense. And then basically, you, we could be finished with our very first uh, Jupyter notebook, but let's make this a little bit more exciting. Let us add here a structure. Let me go back to that code. And let us write here a little if function. So if number is greater, this interval, what, what was given here, so let's say greater 200, then print you are too old for this game Ex exclamation marks else and then we print the sentence let's see if this makes sense what we will now do, I will uh, clear the kernel. So if you will go up to this kernel here, you can basically um, clear all the output that was previously uh, received. So let me clear that output. So you see, then the output disappeared. And then we start basically from the scratch. Let us run this first line all these first lines of code. So a verb like, um, let us say run, enter, good, enter, and then let us press here 100, enter. So the first three lines of code are performed or processed. Then let us press on the next. And there is obviously something wrong here. Let us have a look what it is. So as you see, the error message is this creator sign here is not supported for instances like a string and integer. So basically what this input uh, here received was not a number, but a text string. So we have to transform this. Let us see. I will make this number into an integer. Then I can just put here a int in front of that input. So it's con it's basically converting that text into a whole number. Okay, 
Let us run that again. And let us see what's going on. And now let us run that second line here. And it actually works. I'm 100 years old. Today was a good day. I had to find a lot. Okay, if this makes any sense. So let us run this first line again. And now let us add here uh, another number which is higher than 200 just to see if this works. Great. And let us here add th 300. And next line of code. You are too old for this game. And then finally, let's go to this last cell. Let's again transform it to some text. And then the game is over. So, again, I run this code so the text appears here in this document. If you don't like the last cell, then you can just cut it away. Before we finish off, let's have a look at our folder that we created earlier. So we see here in our folder there has this Jupyter Notebook file been it has been created. And if I go back to this Jupyter Notebook, I could of course also change the file name. So let us call this Madlib Game. Okay, so I'm renaming this name this file. And if you now go back to the folder, you will also see you have here this Madlib Game Jupyter Notebook file. So this is how you create a Jupyter Notebook. So you see some nice properties or some essential properties. You can add text, you can add code, you can execute the code in line. And you can, of course, add much, much more to a Jupyter Notebook. And there is a lot of YouTube videos that explain you all the features of Jupyter Notebooks. So go ahead and watch one. See you later.